Well, folks, we have it. Elias Lindholm is officially no longer a Calgary Flame. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me here today, along with my partner in crime, Nick Zararis. Nick, how are you doing? The Flames finally did something. They did, and it is something pretty significant. So we will dive into all of that today. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts, and of course, on YouTube as well. It is the All-Star break. Everyone is on vacation. Except Craig Conroy. He's cooking. Elias Lindholm is officially a Vancouver Canuck. We talked about the idea that the Flames were the kid with the D-minus, C-plus grade in class, and they were entirely hinging their future on the mercy of the professor being kind to them. They finally turned some work in. I'm prepared to bump them from a D a D plus to a C minus. I'm officially ready to make that declaration that based on just what they got in return for Lindholm and the fact they went about this process reasonably well, that they have gone from a D plus to a C minus. That's still not good. If this is in their major, it's not going to count and they're going to have to take the class over again. But at the very least, <laughs> they have a pulse. They've turned some work in. Yeah, and I think that that's very important in not only the flames direction but also craig conroy uh his reputation his job his future with the flames i think that a lot of people were have been underwhelmed by his work and the return which we will talk about a little bit later here uh is it's a hefty return and it's nice to see a, a team be oh so generous, especially considering there was a first round pick in there. Anytime you talk about a trade at the deadline, there's a checklist. If you are trading a top six forward from your team, you want a roster player or close to as you can be a lock of an NHL prospect, somebody who's ready to come to the NHL either whenever their respective season is over or for the following fall. They got Kuzmenko, who's under contract for next season. Check. They got a first-round pick. Check. They got a conditional pick. Okay. And then they got two prospects in there. What those prospects turn into, you know, whenever you buy at the prospect market, you're buying magic beans. You hope they grow into a bean stock, but there's no guarantee. You might just end up with more beans. So that that's, that's where that's, the Flames did what they could. They got a reasonable return. There's nothing to really complain about here. This isn't a home run, but, you know, it's a solid double. Yeah, and that's better than striking out because I really feel like they, if had they waited this out longer, the return wouldn't have been what it is. And not because those pieces weren't available, but because it's 11.59, your homework's due at midnight, and you're, you're just taking scraps. You are piecing whatever you can together, and you, you, can't, you couldn't let him walk. It would have been absolutely ridiculous, and he never would have recovered from that. Exactly. The, in tr- making this deal happen this early, and we'll talk about it from the Canucks' perspective in a moment, and making it happen this early... They clearly had multiple suitors. I mean, this kind of came out of nowhere. The the Canucks is a landing spot for Lindholm. I know a lot of the conversation had been the Bruins, the Avalanche. I know the Rangers were in the conversation, at least today. In the New York area, Larry Brooks wrote a column saying that Lindholm was the Rangers' top trade, the guy the Rangers coveted the most at this deadline, the same way he did with Patrick Kane last year. So generally speaking, when you have those types of reports out there, that's someone trying to drive up the price somewhere else. 
whether that's Conroy trying to drive up his own price of his own player saying, well, I heard the Rangers really want him or I heard the Avalanche really want him to try and smoke out another team to up their offer a little bit. Is that what happened here? You can't say that for sure, but that's the way the game gets played. Absolutely. And I think one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is Elias Lindholm does not have an extension in place. And that seemed to, at least that's what it was reported and what the game that they were talking was that Elias Lindholm was not going to go somewhere unless he had an extension. And you know what? Good on everyone for just getting this done. And you worry about the rest later. I understand it's a business and the players have to look out for themselves. But for the sake of this trade happening right now on both sides, really, it worked out. So just get it done again. You procrastinate. It's okay. We. We know the Canucks like to do this. They did this last year where they traded for Bo Hor- they traded Bo Horvat to the Islanders at the end of January. And that's another angle that's funny about this, that they traded Bo Horvat, who's probably a better player for a lot better player than Elias Lindholm, for probably a little bit less. They got a little bit less for Bo Horvat than they gave up for Elias Lindholm. Like if you go back and look at it, it's Atu Ratu, a first round pick, and Bovillier. Bovillier is not on the Canucks anymore. Ratu has had a really rough go of it in the <laughs> AHL, and that first round pick they traded for Philip Ronick. So like arguably the Canucks probably would have been better off just finding a way to make the money work with Bo Horvat. But whether or not this is entirely, you know, just the way the market developed or not. The Flames got pressured into doing this early, getting it done early. Uh, The Canucks were the responsible kid in class who turned their homework in a month ahead of the project due date. So the professor went over their draft with them multiple times. They They got feedback. They were able to fine tune this to work this out. Whereas, as you said before, the Flames are the kid who's turning in the homework on whatever your school uses, whether it's Blackboard or Asana or whatever, (laughs) two minutes or Canvas, two minutes before the project was due. In doing that, you limit your options. In getting this done early, you had as many suitors as possible. There's a world where if you wait too long as the Flames, even though you're selling the player, the other teams know you have to get rid of him. So they're going to start knocking their own price down and start making the price worse because they know you're up against a time crunch. Yeah, and that's exactly why I'm so glad they were proactive and we have strayed away from past behavior. Now, let, let's keep it up. Let's keep the ball rolling. Uh, but coming up next, we are going to talk about this, uh, the return, and what is Vancouver going to do with Elias Lindholm? But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of our lives, but can we just take a second and uh, talk about real life for a second? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running low on antibiotics like amoxicillin, and it's not the best time for that. Everybody's got strep throat, uh, ear infections, sinus infections, but the Jace case has you covered in a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and others. This really could happen to any of us. Visit jaysmedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at the fraction of the cost. It's never been more important to be prepared. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has many ways for you to end the season on a W or two, or three. 
And you can check out all those options on their wonderful app. And you can bet on who will win Super Bowl 58. And they have bets like which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Will you be placing a bet if Travis Kelsey is going to propose to Taylor Swift? I feel like... Absolutely not. Right. There's a reason that's only in the Canadian market. You can only make that bet in Canada. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know that. So, no, yeah. we will not be using FanDuel. FanDuel Smart. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us today on Locked on Flames. Uh, make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts because we have a lot of hockey left as well as the trade deadline. We've, Believe it or not, there's still 30-something games to go, and we will probably uh, revisit this when the season ends. But for now, let's start at the beginning. Andre Kuzmenko. 27 years old for another four days. Really good year last year. Had 39 tucks, tied for 12th most in the entire league, uh, 25 at even strength. First year in the NHL last year was a career KHL guy. It wasn't like he was drafted and he stayed over there. He just stayed over there. He was in Russia until he was 25. Lat two years ago, he had the opportunity where he heard there was NHL interest. He came over, had a really good season last year on a bad Canucks team. Very clearly didn't work with him and Rick Tockett because he's playing about a minute and a half less per game. Got a little bu- got bumped a little bit lower in the lineup, and the counting stats aren't there. He's only in the twenties for points when last year he finished with seventy something. So this is a textbook. The Flames think they can do – this is a textbook pump and dump scenario. The Flames are not going – more likely than not, not going to give Kuzmenko a long-term contract. I don't think that's the case here. I think this is going to be similar, what they end up doing with Sharon Govich as well, similar age, where they play him a little bit more. They give him power play time. They let him play with better players. They see that if they can inflate his value a little bit. And then this time next year, we're talking about Kuzmenko Kuzmenko being – you know second and a fourth, the second and a fifth, the second and a B prospect at the deadline. That's what it's all about. Just sometimes flipping it and getting the most for your value and for your players. So um, they did get two prospects as well, which is pretty nice because again, checks off that box of the hope of developing uh, two NHLers. But can you talk to us about Hunter Bruce Brustevich? I so that. Bruce no Brustevich. Yeah, Brustevich. Yeah. The way he said it, he really emphasized the E in it. So that's why I've been saying it that way. But Brustevich, Brustevich, you know, basically the same thing. So you we got time to know. We got time to learn this. He's not under NHL contract yet. By the time he agrees to an ELC an ELC, we will we will promise here we will figure out how to say his last name. Promise. But <laughs> Third round pick, U.S. national team development program guy, uh, born in America, obviously. Uh, Offense first, six foot, 180 pounds, whether or not you want to believe um, the OHL measurements of the Kitchener Rangers. You know, we we all make the joke about what a man says is six foot versus what's actually six foot. But especially in hockey where they have guys like Matt Zuccarello listed like five, nine when he's like five, six and a half. So you can take the measurements for what they are. But. Offense first, uh, really gaudy counting stats in lower levels, 111 points as a 15-year-old, very clearly needed to play in a more difficult league or play up an age group if he was dominating that much. Uh, I, when I have more time to do a deeper analysis or talk to some scouting people, I can give you a little bit more flavor, but... Probably an NHL player, more likely than not, a third-round pick, uh, staying in the OHL at 19, probably ends up if he signs with the Flames in the AHL for a year or two before he gets to the league. But counting stats as a defenseman, they're a decent foundation, probably can put on another 5 to 10 pounds as he matures, gets a little bit older, gets NHL nutrition and strength training. But 
this is good. You, you need to restock your cupboard. The way you want to think about this, you think about a trade tree where you start with one asset and you keep branching out, you keep branching out, and eventually you have to keep turning out the next tier. So even if you know the first round pick, the conditional pick, these two prospects, Kuzmenko, even if they're not in the Flames' long-term plans, they can turn these things into more things and keep mm-hmm. building it out. We, we talk about this idea that every year you, know, you turn over seven of the 50 spots in your organization at least. The Flames are going to blow by that this year as they restock their organization and really set it up for the future. And I think, you know, a lot of people today, like you look at the Tyler Sagan trade tree and while that was not necessarily uh, a popular trade, um, it has really spiraled into things and branched off into positive things. So just because there's a little, there might be a little hiccup or things, these players may not be in the flames long-term picture there. There's still good things to come. Uh, don't don't get uh, too ahead of yourself. I promise it'll be okay. Prospects are magic beans. Yes. No matter what anybody says about any of them, no matter where they get picked in the draft, they all need a good environment to eventually succeed in. And we're talking about guys who are at least a year away from even being close to the NHL. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned a good environment. And I think a lot about how important that uh, is in general and the emphasis that the Flames organization puts on the importance of a good locker room and not it. There's no I in team like that's such a worn out saying, but like the, the Flames are a team. Right now, a uh, few of the families are on uh, their little all-star break vacation together. If you're in a you know, divided locker room, I don't, I don't think that you're all going on vacations together and having Thanksgiving together again. But I don't know. I hope that Kuzmenko has uh, a better relationship with Ryan Huska than he did with Rick Tockett. And I think that Huska is one of those guys that is willing to to talk with you and figure out what what you are. Who are you? Where do you fit in this lineup? And then do his job. We know that for a fact. He was the good cop last year on the coaching staff where everybody would come to him to complain about Daryl. Like he would keep his office door open and he would be the good cop and listen and deliberate. And, you know, it's a little bit different as the head coach. And we'll talk a little bit more about the culture and what this trade means the rest of the season in a minute. But when you are talking about these types of trades, you as the team trading the roster player, the, the the when you're trading the you know the prize, you want to get at least one of quantity and quality. The Flames probably got quantity getting four assets, and one of these two prospects will probably play some NHL games at some point. We didn't talk about Yoni Yermo much, fifth round pick from Finland. Uh, a couple of people on Canucks Reddit were very high on his skating ability, considering he's big. But more likely than not, even if he does come over, he's probably an AHL guy and takes a, li- a little bit more time to get close to being ready for the NHL. But you can never have enough assets. The worst thing you do, you can liquidate them and turn them into more assets. Yeah, and I mean, you just got to take it for what it is. Like this isn't this isn't bad. This is something that you can look at and be like, okay, I'm comfortable with this. Craig Conroy got what was required, and you're not left scratching your head saying, "Where's the rest of it?" And I think that that's a positive step for his uh, general managing abilities. Completely agreed with you there. That, that That is just one component of understanding how to be a general manager is asset management. Sometimes I would argue that's probably that and the cap are the two weak points, which are very funny considering NHL staffs have amateur and uh, amateur pro and pro personnels and capologists all on staff. And there are people who do better jobs of all three of those things on the internet for free. But <laughs> I, I digress. Yes. Um, 
that's such a fun title, capologist. But coming up next, we are going to talk more about Craig Conroy and just what we're getting from this from him at this point in his uh, Calgary Flame tenure. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break and talk to you about Factor. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so you are ready for the new year. Factor is ready to eat meal delivery, takes the stress out of meal planning, and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store, the prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. Plus, over 55 weekly add ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kick start your resolution. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factor's two minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Um, Factor has everything you need for the week, full of flavorful, nutritious eats, in addition to ready to eat meals. They have cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized through life. These frantic times that that are the trade deadline approaching quickly. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us on today's special episode of Locked on Flames. Uh, make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss a, a trade deadline or breaking news episode. Has Craig Conroy redeemed his... I don't want to say his reputation as a general manager because that opens a whole other can of worms, but... In terms of trading, in terms of wheeling and dealing. This is the first trade he got good value in return. To Foley, you probably would have liked another pick in addition to Sharon Govich and the pick that they did get. Uh, Zadorov, you probably would have liked one better pick as opposed to multiple meh picks. This is fine. This isn't slam dunk home run. This is good. This isn't there's nothing really to complain about here. If you if you are a prospect person and there's somebody else in the Canucks organization you liked better, sure. I'd understand that a hundred percent. But face value, everything here checks out. Everything passes the smell test as far as the value within the trade. This is a good trade. And I, I don't know whether or not there's like a an understanding, a gentleman's agreement that when you come in you have to make a couple bad trades to kind of to pay your dues into the club. I, I can't speak to, I would have to go back and look at like what the first couple trades every GM's made on their job, but that kind of is what it felt like as far as to fully in Zadorov that he took pretty meh returns because he mm-hmm. was the new guy and he didn't want to push any buttons or come off in, in the wrong way. This is a good trade. He got good value. There's nothing to really complain about. I'm going to complain. Because I'm confused why this is happening um, when everyone is on vacation. Not, I mean, I would assume they're not working or prioritizing work. Um, and in light of recent news and the backlash this organization has faced, did the Canucks maybe toss them a bone? There's no way to ever know, obviously, but. We're not stupid. We're all adults here. We know how the real world, unfortunately, works. And the Canucks probably saw the news developments of yesterday, saw this as, oh, he's going to need to get this done sooner rather than later. So let's get this over the goal line now. Let's get a sixth Canuck in the All-Star game this weekend. (laughs) And let's go into the next part. Let's go into the stretch run of our season with what we think is close to our final roster. I mean, something we didn't get a chance to talk about, but is worth mentioning. And we can talk about it from both perspectives. Getting this trade done early is important for both teams because it sets them up for the back half of their season. In the Flames case, it 
more sets them up for next year at coming into close as they unwind their position, as they trade Hannafin, Tanev, maybe they trade somebody else in addition. The roster for next year is going to start to take shape and whatever that group is going to look like, the identity, how they want to play, the culture of that group, that's going to start developing now. And it'll go a long way for next season as far as establishing what the Flames are going to be. And then from the Canucks perspective, they get this trade done now. They've still got a month and a week, a month and eight days till the trade deadline, where if they feel like they still need something in addition to Lindholm, they have a whole month to trial run this and see if whether or not they want to add more on top of this. Yes, it's uh, very similar to when the Flames acquired Tyler Toffoli, because you do have that little cushion ahead of the deadline. And that's like you just talked about. It's important. You you have to. You have additional time to work out the kinks and evaluate what you may need or maybe can get rid of. But I am interested to really see what's next because uh, Vancouver media members are reporting that uh, Craig Conroy wants a first round pick for Chris Tanev, um, who's willing to. Give the Flames a pick, please. I think if that's the price, and we're going a little off the wagon here, but if that's the price, I'd be more inclined to call Ottawa and see what they want for Chikrin because Chikrin's better. Chikrin, I think, is also an expiring contract, if I remember correctly, as I pull up cap friendly here. And I think, I can, can I do this in three clicks? Ottawa, defenseman... <laughs> No, Shabbat has one more year under contract, so it's not a straight up. You would have to give up more for him than you would Tanev either way. But I'd be more inclined to look a little higher. That's not to say Chris Tanev isn't good. But if he's on your first pair and you're trying to go on a deep playoff run, you're probably not that deep. If he's on your second or third pair, you're in pretty good shape. So I don't know. I'd have to go. Being that the Rangers and the Flames both aren't in the market for a defenseman, I haven't been looking at who are unrestricted free agent defensemen. So I don't know what the other pieces that would be available in that case. I want to say like Zach Bogosian is one. He's another free pending UFA defenseman. There, there's probably a handful. But Tanev right now is probably the best defenseman available. So start high. Worst thing that happens, someone says no. Best thing that happens. Okay, we'll give you a first round pick. So we'll see. Yep. And because you have gotten ahead of uh, your usual procrastination, you do have a little more time to check in on teams and to kind of say, hey, are you, are you sure you don't want him? Are you sure? We saw your defense last week. We saw. One of my friends just texted me and it popped up in the corner of my screen. Half of Twitter is saying that Bruce DeWitch is the next Kale McCarr and the other half saying he's never going to play in the NHL. So it's a fair trade. You know, that's that's Twitter for you. I feel like that's a great way to um, assess what what's going on in, in when it comes to trades, because no one knows. Uh, if With he is an ex- you can't know. There no. is literally no way to know. No. Uh, obviously wish nothing but the best to Elias Lindholm uh, in his new adventure. Um, hopefully you sign an extension somewhere. You're happy. Um, but I think that does it for today's episode because by the time we wrap this up, who knows? Another trade could break. So... Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcast and on YouTube as well. We are here for you five days a week, Monday through Friday, your team every day. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Make sure to stay hydrated, stay warm, be nice. Nick, any parting words? No trade is official until it's official. <laughs>